Hey, hey. Well, there's tons of crap on the bench, so we're going to talk about it. All right, so the bench is a total mess, and uh, I want to thank my friend Tim for coming over and uh, helping me make the bench into a mess. Uh, yesterday, we had a really good time, uh, so thanks Tim for coming over. Uh, you might remember that uh, Tim was the guy who painted this fantastic truck body, and uh, we have some brand new stuff that's going into these right now, which is why this is out. And so... One of the things I wanted to talk about today was actually uh, this little unit. Some of you might recognize this as our D90. Uh, this is the Raffi 90 that we did up a while back. Uh, we keep it in the shows. It's uh, got a lot of good stuff on it to credit uh, James Knight for this fantastic doors. Of course, it's a GCM C-Max chassis. And now we have a brand new part on there which is uh, inner fenders that come directly from VS Customs. So, I'll tell you what, we keep going back and forth on this whole 3D printing thing, and this truck is just covered with it. I mean, we got Shapeway stuff all over this truck, and now we've got uh, PLA plus front, front, front inner fenders on it. And just to show you how ridiculously easy this is, um, except for the servos out, I'm sorry, we're in the middle of doing stuff with that. I've never run this truck yet, as you can tell by the Tamiya connector, because uh, that should not be on a scale truck anywhere. And uh, the body actually goes on here so easy, it's kind of ridiculous. This is uh, one of those things that I just happen to absolutely love about scale trucking. There, we're done. So, this is uh, how easy it really is. Take out my screws. There we go. So, <clears throat> we're using the four side holes here, two on each side at the bottom of the rocker, in order to secure the body to the footwells here. And of course, we don't really call them footwells in this particular truck because it has a full interior already as part of the as part of the uh, body. And then this body also secures at the back with these uh, little tabs here. There's like this hard plastic loop on the bottom of the body here. You can see it on that side too. And they fit into the the uh, rear bumper slash cross member part which is of course 3D printed. And if I can do this right, it just goes right on. And then that just sits right down on there like that. That's it. If I get the sides in, there we go. Now, what I want to show you today is how these inner fenders turned out. Because this to me is kind of a big deal. Um, you can tell here, start on the bottom, pretty clear, everything's covered, uh, nothing to write home about here, there's really no dirt going to get in anywhere, uh, it's pretty, pretty clear. And of course the battery tray is right there on top of the rear axle, that uh, just door pops open and then boom, you jam your battery in there. So the good news now is that, uh, Tim, of course, is running one of these C-Max Defenders as well. You've seen his blue truck kicking around all over the place. And now we've got... Look at how black it is in there. Like, am I the only guy who absolutely just loves black? Okay. I love this. And we talked about this on the On the Bench series. We talked about this with the Comanche interior because I blacked it out inside. Check out this. Besides that it's black on the outside, I don't care about that as much. But... The inner fenders are black. That, I love that. I don't understand why you would print inner fenders in anything other than black. And, you know, Andy Lowry understands this. He, he made the blazer inner fenders out of a styrene vacuum form. And, of course, they're black because that just makes sense. You can get black styrene, so boom, you're done. And then inside the wheel well, like super clean. Look at that. Super, super clean. So, that's on the bench. I wanted to bring this up because uh, Tim was over the other day. He put the fenders on this truck and uh, I have to do the same job to the 110 now. Let me get this out of the way. 
and I'm not going to spend your time actually doing the job because uh, I can do this on my own time. You don't need to stand there and watch me put a bunch of screws in. But uh, we've already got the six banger motor in here for the TDI from our Shapeway store. We will probably start doing this motor in a home print, uh, in a PLA home print, and add some details on it. So kind of in the middle of making that happen so that we've got a little more options and hopefully save a few bucks on the motor. But one of the cool things about having this apart is uh, I got a chance to actually look in it and see how it was after having beat the complete crap out of it for an entire season. Uh, I think you already know that the body held up just fine besides a few scratches, but I kind of like scratches. Scratches are great. Uh, if you don't believe me, then go watch the Cars movies. So, uh, here we go. Battery tray in the back. If you want to see how this works from the top, you can see that there. The battery just goes right in here from the bottom. Uh, and the top of the battery tray is actually the body, right? So this is body here. The body just contours just like this all the way down. The body contours over this. I mean, this is all made to like fit pretty much exactly. So that's how that goes. And uh, I'm very happy to report that after beating on this for a year, there is basically no dirt or anything in my receiver area. I find no evidence whatsoever of any contaminants being in there. Uh, putting the receiver on the side just kind of gives it that extra level of protection because you know that water is not going to come in and then start going up. It has to come in and come out, uh, you know, anyway. So pretty clear. This is a very clean setup. You can't see any electronics here because when the body goes on it should be flat as a pancake. And it's kind of cool that there's actually all this dirt on the drivetrain, on top of the drivetrain. Any of you guys that have actually pulled a full-scale transmission out of a truck, you know that this happens. And I don't understand it, but somehow the dirt comes up inside here through the frame rails and it just piles and swirls around on there and I don't get it, but it does. So there we go. Uh, one of the things I want to highlight with this that I just figured out just now, this thing is by far my absolute heaviest truck that I have. This one right here. Uh, I have had a couple of pretty heavy trucks. My big blue fiberglass Ford is pretty heavy. <clears throat> this thing tops the cake, okay? Uh, now, not to mention the fact that it's also, it's got these hard rubber seats in it. Actually, they're sort of, they're almost flexible rubber. I mean, you can kind of move them around a bit, but they're still rubber and they're very heavy. The seats in these, in these cars are very heavy. Uh, there's a big bench in there. There's two seats in the front. I also added two drivers, a driver and a passenger I should say. The driver and the passenger are also fairly heavy because they're solid plastic slash rubber. And uh, then of course in the back it's a full wagon body so it's got all this roof weight and for you guys that have actually assembled these you know that there's two levels to these. The roof part is a separate piece of plastic mold that actually bolts onto the cabin portion here. So this is pretty heavy. Now I will say that after beating the crap out of this for a whole year, it looks really good. Like I've got marks like this where I've knocked into rocks and whatever. I've got some scuffs on the trim. I've certainly got lots of scuffs on the on the wheel arches here and a whole bunch of stuff along the rocker panels, but this body is incredibly tough. That's good to know. Um, I tore off the back hinges. This one here, I ripped this hinge off one time by uh, rolling down a hill and the door opened while it was rolling down a hill. So, as you can see, I've got my scale bungee cord in there holding the door now shut. You can see it there, yellow bungee cord. I'm holding the door shut with the bungee cord because that's what people do. And uh, this body, I just came to found out, having weighed it just now, this body weighs an official 2.0 kilograms basically right on two kilograms this body just that right there I put this on the scale interestingly enough this right here weighs can you guess 2.0 kilograms that to me is pretty crazy so this is bordering on the heaviest truck that I have because of the body because I've never seen body work this heavy yet in my life uh, but the cool news is it drives fantastic and for any of you guys who have actually seen this truck out on the trail, it's a beast. It's a thing to behold, for sure. Uh, it rides really good. 
it feels like the suspension is way too stiff on it when the body is off the truck. But, and I knew that when I was playing with the spring rates and stuff, but I've come to realize now that when the body weighs two kilograms, you need a heavy spring. And it does not take much to get this thing to flex out at all. Uh, just the body is so heavy, it rides so good. Now, <clears throat> I am going to put the inner fenders in here from VS Customs, and I'm very excited about that. And that's one project now that I can finally get off of my bench. The bench is still a complete <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> the bench is still a complete mess here because I'm actually working on a Hilux C Max project that's coming up in a minute. Uh, that body should be here in a, probably a week, and then I can get that all buttoned up, and I've got some new rims and tires to go on that too. And uh, the other project that we've been doing is this uh, 70. The LC70 is uh, a really cool truck. Uh, it's one of those iconic expedition, seems like to me, it seems like it's mostly Australian, uh, really like heavily used Australian truck. Uh, they seem to be outfitted really well for, for uh, Outback sort of runs. Again, 3D printing on the inner fenders. Uh, this stuff I did here at the house and uh, pretty excited about that home printer stuff. So this of course is uh, C-Max. We've printed up some radius arms to proof out the design which uh, at this point seems to be a grand success. So we've got coil buckets, radius arms, and we've got a brand new 157 size Bauhaus Toyota axle which is going to be totally amazing. And of course to make sure that it steers epically we are using the Bauhaus double shear knuckle which happens to fit perfectly on their Toyota axle which happens to work perfectly with the radius arms. Uh, I don't want to tell you this, but it's all made to fit, so yeah, it works good. The rear is also uh, 157, brand new from Bauhaus RC, and it's got uh, these fantastic uh, caps on it. We uh, stuck in the axle hardware kit, and away we go. Now, I don't know if I'm going to leave the shocks in the middle or move them to the outside and put them on a shock tower. That will depend on what we do for battery mounting in the back of the truck. But at this stage, here's where we're at. So, the other bits for this thing are actually on the printer. There's a whole bunch of stuff going to get printed to get this done. Uh, giant thank you to Stefan Robert from uh, our local club who uh, helped out a ton, I mean a ton, with the design on this stuff. Did a great job. And uh, you know, that's just RC passion at its finest, right? Just like kind of we do, you know, everybody does this, but we want to get something together for our own project. And so we design some parts for it, and if it's good for the community and we have the ability to do so, then we can pass around the love. And so uh, a giant thank you to Stefan for actually designing all these files and uh, doing a whole bunch of test printing and spending hours and hours on it. So here we go. Uh, we're making progress on the 70. I haven't really decided what I'm going to do for kind of a theme or... How would you say, um, like a setup? I don't know what I'm going to do yet for ride height or any of that stuff. I do know that the back of this needs to come up a bit. Where did I put that cross member? There it is. So the frame sits in the body kind of like, about like that. I'm using the factory bed from the body kit. Kind of sits like that pretty much level all the way along more or less level all the way along is kind of the idea and then in the front it sits right behind the bumper so you got a lot of front end support lots of front end support there to make sure that if you're banging into stuff trying to do class one or whatever that you've got lots of support so it's good that's what we're doing and unfortunately the bench is a huge mess I'm really sorry I don't have any other updates with these except for uh, those fantastic new fenders for the D90 C Max that are D110 C Max that are coming for from uh, VS Customs look for those soon and of course the the two new builds that we're working on is this Toyota and the new Toyota Hilux that's coming up and uh, very excited to have uh, some more on the bench time I know you guys are too and uh, I know I don't know what you're building right now but I'm sure you're pretty happy with your progress and your project and so uh, yay for winter and uh, 
see if I can adjust this here a bit. Thanks for watching.